Jordy Jor back for more Summer House Martha's Vineyard season two. What was the thing you learned in season one, or maybe even from Winter House, that you went into this summer top of mind? I think to just take a beat before popping off. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just pause. Okay, I could chill out with that, or I need to double down. Yeah, that would be the thing. Okay, so we're figuring out, are we hitting back or are we pulling back? Okay. Right. You had me up and I was ready to kick your ass. Who would you say changed the most between the previous summer and this summer we're about to watch? It's hard to pinpoint just one. Uh, if I had to, I would say either Alex, Amir, or Jasmine. Did the being on TV part, being on Bravo part, get in anybody, make them act a certain kind of way? Absolutely. <laughs> Any of those people you just named? Absolutely. <laughs> Since last summer, Jordan and Summerton got real close, close away from me. Are you excited to talk to Jasmine? No, I know, uh, no. You've been like her friend the longest out of all of us. Maybe we weren't as good of friends as I thought. We do start the season off uh, in an odd place for you and Jasmine. If you had to explain the divide that was there, how would you set that up for the viewers? I mean, I think we saw some of it in the first season, right? We're hearing me express, and not just me, other people expressing they don't recognize this person as she's developing in this relationship. Um, I think we also saw kind of like the matchmaking thing happening and like the importance of a relationship. You want a life partner? Of course. Okay. I don't think he's here. I'm just saying I like, have it's to just... want it more than you though, Jazz. I know. And that's where I feel like there's a disconnect. And that's what breaks my heart. But why? I wasn't why used to that type of pressure from my friend, especially ex as I express, hey, this is not what I want right now. Right now I'm celibate. I don't know, this is not even what's on my mind. And then obviously in between last summer and this summer, there were just evolutions of that moment and then some of those same themes. So yeah, it, all, it kind of all came to a head and then we walk into the season and we weren't speaking. Were you surprised that she seemed surprised by the divide that was there? Because coming into this season, she's like, why aren't my friends talking to me? Yeah, I can't speak for everybody else, but usually if there's a collective group distancing themselves from you, usually it's there's a common thread. So I don't know. Do you think after the events of this summer we're about to watch, she gets that now? I hope so. I mean, I I certainly think there's a, a different level of, of self-awareness. I do think that it's easier for her to kind of tap back into her friendships because her relationship isn't so much the focal point this summer. Yeah. On that note, what is it like to be in the house and not have Silas there? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to be different um, when your partner isn't around. I think that's not too crazy of a of an idea, but it's hard because Silas was a huge piece of, I think, the tension in some of the house last year. You're not gonna manipulate me. Bye. I don't work Bye. like Just that. Just like you control Jasmine. Bye, that's what everybody feels. <laughs> Bye, you're controlling. And so not having that, I think Jasmine was able to let loose a little bit differently. I'm Where sure. do you and Jasmine stand right now? I mean, as far as I know, we're good. I attended her baby shower. We haven't seen each other, but we've talked on the phone and we've we've ch we've kept in contact and chatted. Um, so yeah, I think we're fine. I think we're in a good place. Going into the house, who did you find yourself or feel the closest to? And coming out, did that change? I mean, Preston always. Yeah, <laughs> Preston and I are always the most consistent. Platonic husband and wife. Platonic? Who said that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have to revoke a certain card he holds if, that, <laughs> if that's the case. Yes, yes. We're happily in a platonic throuple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does his man feel about you? Are you also his he, wife? He named us Preston's partners. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, you know, he stays in his lane. He's the only man and I'm the only woman. So we're good.
Who do you think will surprise the viewers the most this season? Ooh, surprise. I think people will see a different side of Summer that they weren't anticipating. Yeah, and some things are flying out of mouths that I didn't expect to hear. You didn't invite the person you've been inside of. It was hard to forget. We had just sat down for our first meal together. So it was quite the introduction to the trip, one that I wasn't expecting. And I was just stunned. I'm really glad they didn't show my face, to be honest, because <laughs> the way I was just stuck. Yeah. Does that set a tone then for kind of the initial entry into this vacation? I think so, actually. I think that that was an accurate depiction of what is in store for the rest of the season, which is just shocking one-liners and interesting arguments and then a lot of makeups and yeah, a roller coaster ride. All responsibility for your girl, bro. Stop raising your care. voice to me. This relationship is over. God damn. We also have like Spider-Man moments where it's like you, you, you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, these are the moments that reality TV are made of, and For so sure. are sharing personal journeys. We know you're going to open up about something that I think will probably help a lot of people, make people feel seen and heard. I have alopecia. I don't know if my hair will grow back this time. As a Black woman, hair is our currency. <laughs> hair. I was actually very taken aback by the response just from the trailer alone. I wasn't expecting really anybody to say anything. And I got an influx of messages and, and emails from people who are also dealing with alopecia. So that made me feel good. And that made me feel like, okay, now I'm excited for more people to see it because I didn't realize so many people were struggling with the same, um, with the same thing. It's a different personal journey than the one you shared last year, which was, We've been celibate for a minute, and then we get to Winter House. We were still celibate. We get to Bravo. Not Prime. intentionally, right? At that point, it was no longer intentional. It just was just. I don't know what's going on. Well, I think you know you're protecting your peace in a way by making sure only the right ones enter. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Private property. Yes. Sign is no passing. But where where are we at on that? Have things changed since? Unfortunately, we're still in a drought. Okay. However, right now I am on the hunt for three hoes. Why three? I don't know. I think there's power in threes. I feel like I want to, I went through my pure era and now I kind of want to go through, I want to like see what it's like dating and living it up in my thirties. I don't know. I haven't been with anybody in my thirties. I want to see what's up. I need like a year of just like, hot girl, and then I'll be ready for a relationship. All right, we started this with the lesson you applied to season two. What's the lesson coming out of season two? Ooh, um, ooh, I don't know yet. You might have to ask me at the end of the season once I see some things. Okay, you've, now you've, you've gotten, your reunion bandit has been ripped off with the Winter House reunion. Do you think you guys are gonna get one and are you even mentally prepared for a reunion <laughs> for this season? I have a good feeling we'll get one. I don't know, but I'm just speaking into the universe. I think we will. Do I have a good feeling about it? Absolutely not. Not looking forward to it. However, I'm looking forward to serving looks. As always. I feel like I will eat that reunion up this year, visually.